Greetings. Beans, don't mess with that stuff. Hey. I put in a I put in a new trash can lining and he's messing with it. No. Off you go. Go on. Nope, don't mess with that. Don't mess with that. The trash can's gonna get you if you mess with it. There we go. Anyway. Greetings. Um Hold on, let me just move the books forward so I can actually reach the Bible. Where'd he go? Oh, hold on. You better not snap at him. Max is at the door. Okay. You be good now. I'm watching y'all. Good boy, Max. Good boy. Max just got up and left. We have a baby gate set up to separate them. Anyway. I hope you all are doing well. Today's been a good day. Um, got to see to, uh, a few people go live today. You better not climb that gate, boy. Kind of wish I had some. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, chapters 20 and 21 of John. Great, where'd you go? What? Did you climb it? Okay, no, you didn't. Okay, good. He's behind my door. It's like watching a toddler. Anyway, chapter 20. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. <clears throat> so Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Don't mess with that boy. He's very energetic. Uh, chapter 20. Chapter 20 covers the aftermath of Jesus' crucifixion and burial, the empty tomb, the risen Jesus encounter with Mary Magdalene, and Jesus' appearances to his disciples and their uh, commissioning. Ow. Sorry, I gotta snap, crackle, pop the spine. Hey, beans. Verse 1. The first day of the week is Sunday, which therefore has become the day that believers set aside to worship the Lord. Uh, Mary Magdalene left before dawn to go to Jesus' tomb, uh, to complete the burial preparations. Sorry, I may pause a few times since Beans is under my desk and I don't want him to mess with the wires. Um, uh, Mar Mary Magdalene left before dawn to go to Jesus' tomb to complete the per the burial preparations, which had to be done, which had to be left undone due to the beginning of the Sabbath. Uh, the other Gospels indicate that other women were with her while it was still dark. Compare uh, the slightly different points in time uh, of the process in Matthew 28, verse 1, and Mark 16, 2. Oh, and Luke 24, verse 1. Why are you meowing? 
Well, he really climbed in my recliner. But Matthew's Gospel explains that the stone had been rolled back by an angel of the Lord. You see this in chapter 28, verse 2. Be careful now. Uh... Verse 2, at this point, Mary has no thought of resurrection. The the plural we suggests the presence of other women besides Mary. On the other disciple, uh, the other disciple, when mentioned in John, means John himself. I swear, if he finds out how to get up to where my plants are, I'm going to need to get, like, a water spritzer. Um... Verse 5, stooping to look in, he saw, apparently, but not, uh, apparently, by now it is daylight. Uh, He, the other disciple, did not go in, perhaps because of Simon Peter's status among the twelve. You can get down. You've done it before. You can do it. You got this. There you go, you weirdo. Verse 6, The linen cloths lying there are clear evidence that Jesus' body had not been taken by grave robbers or by his disciples uh, or by his enemies, who would not have taken the time to remove these cloths. The New Testament elsewhere affirms the real physical nature of Jesus' resurrected body. Uh, See Matthew chapter 28 verse 9, Luke 24 30 and verse 39 and verse 42. John 20.17 and verse 20 and verse 27, and Acts 10.41. Most likely, Jesus unwrapped these cloths from his body when he, when he awakened from death and left them behind. Verse 7. The reference to the face cloth being folded up in a place by itself suggests that Jesus himself had taken it off and folded it neatly. Verses 8 to 9. The other disciple also went in. The presence of two male witnesses made evidence acceptable under Jewish law. As yet, they did not understand the scripture uh, proves that the disciples did not make up a story to fit what they thought uh, was predicted by scripture. Only Only later, aided by the Spirit's teaching ministry, were they able to understand. John may be thinking of specific Old Testament passages, such as Psalm 16.10 and Isaiah 53, verses 10 to 12, and Hosea uh, chapter 6, verse 2, or broader themes in the whole of Scripture. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be a gardener, she said to him, Sir, if we have carried him Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to your brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. Verses 11 to 12. Uh, Mary saw two angels in white. Angels often appear in pairs and are often uh, depicted as dressed in white. Uh, I'll see Daniel chapter 10 verse 56 and Revelation 15 6. He beans. Verse 15. Mary mistook Jesus for a gardener, perhaps because it was not fully light. She may also have uh, turned and seen someone there, but had not turned back toward the, but had then turned back toward the tomb as she spoke. Not messing with the wires, are you? 
You better not be. Ah, uh, where was I? Ah, in verse 16, she turned again to speak directly to Jesus. After his resurrection, the disciples did not always immediately recognize Jesus. See Luke chapter 24, verse 16 and verse 31. Uh, a little bit about Thomas. Thomas, one of the twelve disciples, was called the twin. He courageously declared that he was willing to die with Jesus. Unfortunately, however, he is most remembered for displaying doubt rather than bravery. When Jesus first appeared to the disciples following his resurrection, Thomas was not with them. Overcome with uncertainty, he refused to believe the news that Jesus... No. Come here, you. No. You little rascal. He's messing with the wires. You don't go back there. No, no, no. No, no, no. No. Careful now. Uh, Thomas declared that he would believe only if he were able to see the scars from, Ju from Jesus' crucifixion on his hands and side. A few days later, Thomas was with the other disciples when Jesus appeared to them again. When Jesus invited him to see and touch his wounds, Thomas immediately responded, My Lord is my God. Hold on. I'm not gonna... Gotta keep an eye on him. Verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary. Hearing only her name, Mary recognizes the voice of Jesus. Verse 17, I have not yet ascended, does not deny the fact that Jesus' spirit went to the Father in heaven at the moment of his death. Rather, it means that his bodily ascension after his resurrection had not yet occurred. To my Father and your Father maintains a difference between how God is Christ's, uh, how God is Christ's God and Father, and how he is the disciples' God. But he is also... He, but he also calls believers his brothers, implying a personal relationship. Oh, you, he knocked over the foam roller. Jesus appears to the disciples. On the evening of that day, the, day, uh, the first day of the week, the doors being locked, uh, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Get out from under there, you. Uh, Jesus said to them, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And then he, and when he said and when he had said this he breathed on them and said to them receive the holy spirit if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven then if you withhold forgiveness from any it is withheld verse 19 some interpreters understand the doors being locked to imply that Jesus miraculously passed through the doors. Hubba bubba bubba bubba. Hubba bubba. I need to get like a water spritzer. Um, miraculously passed through the doors or the walls of the room. Since Jesus clearly has a real physical body with flesh and bones after he rose from the dead, uh, it is possible that the door was miraculously opened so that Jesus could, could enter. Verses 21 to 22. These verses contain the Great Commission. Compare Matthew 28 verses 16 to 20. Don't mess with the trash can. <laughs> Hmm. 
Uh, they provide the conclusion of the entire gospel's presentation of Jesus as the one sent from the Father. The sent one, Jesus, has now become the sender. He sends his followers to serve as his messengers and representatives. All three persons of the Godhead are involved in this commissioning. As the Father sent Jesus, so Jesus sends his disciples, equipping them with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, it prepared them for what happened when the Holy Spirit was given at Pentecost. See Acts chapter 2. This does not mean that the Holy Spirit had no presence in the disciples' lives prior to this point. Do, don't try and jump on the bed. I see you eyeing it. You're not going to make it. You're too small. He's trying. Verse 23. The expressions, they are forgiven. And it is withheld. Both represent perfect tense, uh, yeah, perfect tense verbs in Greek, and could also be translated. Where was I? Uh, and can and could also be translated, they have been forgiven, and it has been withheld. The idea is not that individual Christians or churches have authority on their own to forgive or not forgive people. Rather, as the church proclaims the gospel message of forgiveness of sins in the power of the Holy Spirit, it simply reflects that God in heaven, uh, reflects what God in heaven has already done, I gotta get some I gotta get him some food in a second. Jesus and Thomas. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the marks of the nails, and place my fingers in the marks of the nails, and place my hand into his si- into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand, place it on my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. He keeps climbing up the chair and then meowing like he can't get off. Uh, Thomas answered, answered him, My Lord and my God! Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Uh, Verse 25. Apparently, Thomas thinks the disciples may have seen a ghost. Dude. He's on my backpack. He's going to fall into my backpack. Verse 26. Eight days later refers to the following Sunday. One week after Easter because the first day was also included in counting the number of days. Verse 28. Thomas' confession of Jesus as his Lord and God confirms the reference to Jesus as God in chapter 1, verse 1, and verse 18. Get down. Come on. There you go, you weirdo. Uh... This is one of the clearest New Testament texts of the deity of Christ. Some false religious cults try to explain this away by arguing that Thomas' statement was merely an an exclamation of astonishment that, in effect, took God's name in vain. Such an explanation is unthinkable, however, given the strong Jewish moral convictions of the day and because Thomas said these words to him, that is, to Jesus. The purpose of this book. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. John uh, verse 29. Note the possible echo of this text in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Verses 30 to 31. John's purpose 
statement, and conclusion repeat his major themes, Jesus' identity as the Christ and Son of God, his selected messianic signs, uh, the importance of believing in Jesus, and the gift of eternal life. On Jesus' unique status as Son of God, see note on chapter 1, verse 14. He beans. Chapter 21 is the epilogue, the roles of Peter and of the disciple whom Jesus loved. Chapter 21 describes Jesus' third and final resurrection appearance in this gospel. It also com compares the calling of Peter and the disciple who Jesus loved. Jesus appears to the seven disciples. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, the two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet his disciples did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord! When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. Verse 1. With the week-fold festival of unleavened bread now past, the disciples have left Jerusalem and returned to Galilee. Don't. Don't you dare. Don't do it. Hey, no. Come here, you. You can't escape me. You're stuck in the chair now. All right, where was I? Uh, ah, verse two. The names of the son of sons of Zebedee and are James and John. Luke mentions that they were partners with Simon in fishing uh, before being called by Jesus. Well, you shouldn't have messed with that area. See, now you're stuck. Come here, you. Don't go back there. Uh, Luke mentions that they were partners with Simon in fishing before being called by Jesus. Verse 3. Night was the preferred time for fishing in ancient times. Fish caught during the night could be sold fresh in the morning. Dude, hold on, man. Hold on. Uh, where was I? Ah, uh, verse 7. The disciple whom Jesus loved must be one of the seven mentioned in verse 2. He is also certainly John, the son of Zebedee, the author of the, gos of the gospel that we are currently reading. What are, you, what are you messing with? Oh, he's messing with his tail. When they got out of when they got out on land they saw a charcoal fire in place and fish laid out on it and bread Jesus said to them bring some of the fish that you have just caught so Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish 153 of them and although they, there were so many the net was not torn Jesus said to them come and have breakfast now none of the disciples dared ask him who are you they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus had revealed the disciple, uh, re re was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Hmm. 
Verse 11, probably uh, 153 represents the number of fish counted. Fishermen routinely, routinely counted the number of fish prior to selling them at the market. Jesus and Peter. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Excuse me. He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk when, wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to, he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. Verses 15 to 17. On Simon, son of John, see chapter 1, verses, verse 42. Peter had denied Jesus three times. Now Jesus asks Peter three times to reaffirm his love for him. And then he recommissions him. Jesus questioned, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than, than these? Probably means, do you love me more than these other disciples do? In these, three, uh, in these three questions and answers, Peter uses the same ver verb for love all three times. A Greek phileo. But Jesus uses a different verb for love in the first two questions. Greek aga agapo. Agapo. And then switches to Peter's word. Uh, phileo. In the third question. The two words are often used interchangeably. Peter is grieved because Jesus asked him if he loved him. You know everything is an affirmation of God of Christ's deity. Uh, feed my lambs. Jesus, as the true shepherd, appoints Peter and the other apostles to assist him by caring by caring for his people. See first Peter chapter five verses one to four. Verses 18 to 19, stretch out your hands, pictures crucifixion. Early Christian sources mention Peter's martyrdom without telling how it happened. Jesus and the beloved apostle. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. The one who also had, lean, had leaned back against him during the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, then is, it, then is that to you? Follow you, follow me. So the saying spread abroad among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he, that he was not to die. But if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Uh, verse uh, this is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things and who was writ and who has written these things and we know that his testimony is true verse 24 this is the disciple is typically is typical of the way in which john uh, as the author of the gospel refers to himself either indirectly or in the third person other examples include the disciple whom jesus loved one of the twelve and one of the sons of zebedee uh, these, identi these identify the author as the Apostle John. We know is the author referring to himself, although he probably includes his readers uh, in this affirmation of the truth of this gospel account. Now, there was also many, uh, many other things that Jesus did where every one of them was written. Were every, were every one of them written? I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that could be, that would be written. 
verse 25, the world itself could not contain the books, emphasizes the limitless nature of all Jesus accomplished for mankind's salvation as the eternal Son of God. Though his incarnation, life, death, resurrection, uh, through his incarnation, life, death, resurrection, and ascension. Oh, and that is all. That is the end of jo the Gospel of John. Tomorrow we're going to get into chapter 1 and 2 of Acts which I think is also written by the, uh, by the Apostle John. Anyway, thank you for joining. Um, I gotta go tire out beans. And I gotta work on some homework as well. But thank you for joining. I hope you all have a blessed day. Uh, God has blessed me with this little kitten. I was stressed out earlier, though, because... Um, I, I'm when it comes to pets I'm I'm only really used to my grandparents dog Max and he gets uh, he gets really depressed when they're not here and he lies about and I started associating that behavior and emotion with what uh, Beans was doing when I'm not here and I was very concerned but uh, I prayed to God about it he led me to talk to my sister and she helped me out. You can get down. You've literally done this three times within the last ten minutes. You can do it. Anyway, uh, thank you again for joining. And until next time, farewell.